Welcome back to another video. My name's Carl Gosling and today I want to share a little idea with you guys about perhaps a better or easier way to balance your motion platform. Now it doesn't have to be one of the Dolph Reality motion platforms. This applies to any motion platform that needs balancing. Now I had an interesting conversation with a chap in the comments about a month ago. He had a next level racing V3 and it kept cutting out uh, going into some sort of overheat protection mode I think it was. And he spoke to uh, Next Level Racing and they basically told him, but in slightly different words, to balance his platform. Now, with the instructions for the Next Level Racing V3, there's no mention of balancing. I did a video about this before where I speculate it's because the motors are quite a bit stronger, perhaps, than what the Doff Reality ones are. And so they can take a bit more weight and a much more unbalanced load and still be able to perform. But everything has its limits. And in the case of this guy, um, perhaps it was his overall weight or the weight of his chair and everything else, his accessories all attached to it. Um, it, it was overheating basically. And they, they pretty much said to him, you need to balance it. So yeah, whether it's a Doff Reality motion platform, whether it's another type, another brand of seat mover, whether it's a next level racing one that you're having problems with, um, this applies to any, any seat mover motion platform. Now, if you've watched my video on how to balance one of these, um, you'll know that you have to be able to adjust the seat independently of the motion platform forwards and backwards to get it to balance for your particular weight. Now, I had a chap, a different chap in the comments ask me if putting the seat rails on the bottom of the platform instead of between the seat and the platform would allow, would allow you to balance it dynamically by just sliding the whole thing backwards and forwards. The answer to that, of course, was no because the seat needs to be able to move independently of the motion platform, and the motion platform also needs to be able to move independently of your cockpit to be able to balance it. Again, if you haven't watched my balancing video and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, go check out my balancing video, there'll be a link in the description, and then perhaps come back to this one. Or if you can follow along, you know, mentally visualizing what we're doing, you'll, you'll get the grasp of it anyway. But let's bring up a picture of, the, of, a, of a Dolph Reality motion platform. Let's get some screen chapter on the go. So, if you look at this here, if you follow my mouse cursor along the top side here, this is where we put our seat rails um, for mounting a seat. Now, typically all the seats I've looked at are, are narrower than what this motion platform is here. And you have to use adapter plates uh, that come in and just make, it, make these top sections a bit wider, na narrowing you know, the, the, the upper footprint so you can bolt your seat down. Again, if you haven't seen how you do that, if you go watch my review and installation of this M2 motion platform, you'll see my adapter plates where they just bolt to the outside here where these pre-drilled holes are and the plates literally just come inward, you know, an inch or so, and then you drill your holes for your seat rails and you bolt those down. Now that allows you to slide your seat backwards and forwards on top of the motion platform. But from a balancing point of view, you don't know just how far back or forward you need to be able to slide the seat to get it to balance. And again, if you watch my balancing video, you'll see that I had to actually move my motion platform all the way back as far as it would go on my GT Omega cockpit and adjust the position of the seat sliders on the bottom of my GT Omega seat. I had to move them further forward to give me the adjustment I needed to get it to balance. So anyway, <clears throat> going back to the, the chap that messaged me saying, could you put seat sliders on the bottom of this motion platform to be able to slide it all back and forward, would that help? The answer, of course, was no, but that instantly made me think, if we put seat sliders both on the bottom of the motion platform, so if you follow my mouse again, you see this bottom part of the frame here. If we put a seat slider under there and the same on the other side behind this motor, and then seat sliders on the top, where you would bolt your seat down and then position the whole thing, I would say slightly favoring toward the back of your cockpit. That will give you completely independent movement of the motion platform from the cockpit and from the seat. So you could have your grab bar at the bottom of the motion platform here. You could pull that up and slide the whole platform all the way back. And, you st and then, of course, the seat would have a, a grab bar at the front, allowing you to slide the seat independently as well. And having a combination of the two would allow you to balance your motion platform and your seat so much easier 
um, than if you have to do it by sort of estimating, drilling holes, bolting it down, sitting the seat on, but without drilling holes, hoping to get it in the right place, trying to balance it up. And it's a lot of fiddling around. If you were to want to fit sliders on the bottom of this and the top, so you could do it all independently, that would make balancing the platform a lot easier. Now there's a couple of drawbacks to this. Seat sliders add a little bit of play. So you can get the seat and you can wiggle it a little bit. Um, if you don't have seat sliders, you know, this, this applies to any car seat. If you don't have seat sliders, the seat's a lot more solid. So adding a second pair of seat sliders adds in a little bit of extra play. I'm, I'm, I haven't tried this, so I don't need to, because mine's balanced but I'm just sort of thinking out loud here. So something just to bear in mind, it might not be enough to worry about, but it definitely will add a touch more play in. Uh, the, other, the other problem we've got is that these I found a couple of different universal seat sliders. And just like I mentioned a minute ago, this platform is too wide for most seats. It's also too wide for most universal seat sliders. If we look at this picture here, you've got your bar that runs between the two. Now, there is a little bit of adjustment width ways. You can squish it inward, you can't make it any wider. So I think the maximum width this would go to was 345 millimeters. And the actual width of the bolt holes on this Dolph Reality platform was something like 405. And that's why I had to make adapter plates up. Again, if you want to see them, go and look at my installation and review video of the Dolph Reality M2 motion platform. So. You could use this one, but you'd have to make adapter plates. Now, there'll be a link in the description to one of these if you want to get one. Um, there's another type of universal seat slider, which looks like this. This comes in two separate parts, so you can have it as wide or as narrow as you like, which is, which is brilliant. But the drawback to this one is only one half of the seat slider locks into position. And you can see which one that is, obviously, by the one with the handle attached to it. Now, that means the other side moves completely freely. I don't think that's the best idea. I mean, the, again, we're talking about additional play here. And when we're using this with a motion platform, it's going to physically be moving things around. I don't know if having one side completely free and only one side locked in position is the best idea. But they're the two universal seat sliders that I've found available. This one will require adapter plates. This one you can put on whatever width you want. So this would be the one you put underneath the platform. Your seat will still need adapter plates on a Dolph Reality one because the platform's too wide. Um, but this could go underneath the platform and it would bolt straight down on the, on the underneath here and the same the other side. And then if you look at this GT Omega rig, which is what I've got, it would just bolt along the bottom here um, just below where this sort of GT Omega logo is here, again where my mouse is. Bolt along the bottom here. I'd bolt it right to the very back here, in fact, on both sides to give you a fair bit of forward and backward adjustment. But by having it bolted there on rails, then you see on top on rails, those, those two can move completely independently of one another and will make it so much easier to balance. It also means if you're, let's say you're particularly short, maybe you're only five foot five, you balance it for you. And then a friend comes around who's six foot five, <laughs> The platform is going to be out of balance. You're going to have to slide that seat really far back to accommodate your friend's hugely long legs compared to your own. And from that moment on, the seat, uh, the platform and the seat are now out of balance. And you may find your motion platform struggles to move him. In this scenario, you just grab that bottom rail um, here, at the very bottom one below your motion platform, and slide the motion platform back as well. Uh, and, you know, and find the perfect place for him balance wise if you wanted to. Uh, and obviously you've got all the adjustment in between. So I just thought I'd share this idea out there. Um, once you've fitted these, it certainly makes balancing it dynamically a piece of piss. So you can literally just move them around as much as you want to, to get them in balance. Again, if you haven't seen how to balance one of these platforms, go watch my other video. Um, but there's links in the description to both of these. My cat's about to jump on the keyboard. Excuse me, Ori. That's not what I need. Um, yeah, there'll be links in the description for both of these universal seat sliders. Um, so if you do want to give this a go, feel free to go and grab them. It will help support the channel. But, um, but yeah, hopefully that's been of help to people. Um, if it has, the usual, throw a sub, throw a like, whatever you fancy doing, throw a penny in the pot, 
you know, contribute to the channel. It all, it all helps. Um, but I thought I'd just throw this video together quickly, as, you know, as it, as it popped into my head and get it out there. But yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for watching. Um, and as I say, if you haven't watched the balancing videos or the installation and review videos, go watch those. It'll all make a little bit more sense as to what this video is about. And, um, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. As always, take it easy.